In section 6 of chapter 4, we're not going to learn any new math. We're just going to learn how to find things differently using some technology. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to find lines of best fit using linear regression models with technology. So instead of like last time, we just picked two points and we drew a line through it and hoped it was good, technology allows us to be exact so that every single one of us get the exact same equation regardless of what two points we pick. So we've learned how to write and find equations for lines by hand. Many calculators use complex algorithms that find a more precise line called the line of best fit. We're going to use linear regression. So your calculator may also produce a number called the correlation coefficient. And this is going to be an R. I know, it doesn't seem like it makes sense, but it's an R. This number will tell you if the correlation is positive or negative and how closely the equation is modeling the data. The closer that this number is to positive one or negative one, the more closely the equation is going to model the data. And we're going to be using Desmos.com. I know we've used it a little bit in the past, but that's where we're going to go to do this. So when you go to Desmos.com, we're going to start graphing things. And let's go to our first problem. So the table shows the amount of money made by movies in the United States. Use a graphing calculator to write an equation for the best fit line for that data. So when I take a look at my years here, it starts from 2000 and goes to 2009. So when I type it in my table, I'm going to do years after 2000. So I'm going to have 2000 to 2009 in there. So instead of writing 2000 to 2009, I'm just going to put 0 to 9. So let's go back to Desmos. And up here, I would suggest either writing down these steps or maybe watching this a, t a couple times so you get it. But we're going to add something up here with a little plus sign, and we want to add a table. So remember for the x's, we said we were going to use 0, 1, to all the way up to 9. And then for the y values, we got to type in, we need to look at our y values again. So we have all of these decimals in here that we're just going to type in. Um, even though it's in billions of dollars, it doesn't really matter for the purposes of this. We're still just going to use the numbers that they gave us. So my y values are going to be 7.48, then 8.13, 9 9.19, 9.35, 9.27, 8.95, kind of tedious, 9.25, 9.65, 9.85, and then the last one is 10.21. So we can see these points on this graph if we kind of zoom out. So there's all of our points. We can see from here that it has a positive correlation. It goes up a lot at first and then kind of shoots over. So this is plotting the points. This is what we did yesterday. And yesterday we would have picked a couple of the points and we would have drawn a line of best fit through it and then found an equation. Now what we're going to do is let this technology do it for us. So what we want to do is come back up to add an item again. And this time we want to add an expression. Now this part's a little weird. We're going to type in something similar to y equals mx plus b except we want it to take the x and y values from this table. So to type that in, we don't just want to type in a solid y, we want to type in y1. So just type in y and then 1. And then instead of an equal sign, we want it to find the line of best fit. So we're going to type in the squiggle that's right next to the number 1. you got to hit shift to get to it, but it's a little squiggle there. And then remember, this is going to look like m x plus b. 
but just like the y, we want it to be the x from the table. So we're going to use x1 again, and then we got to have plus b. And if you look, this orange line right here does a pretty good job of slicing right through our data. And if we come over down here, these parameters, I'll make this go away. These parameters, the m and the b, are the slope and the y-intercept of this equation. Now remember we said that we had this r here. If we go back to our notes, the r was this thing right here, the correlation coefficient. The closer it is to 1 or negative 1, the more closely the equation models the data. So when we come here and look that it's like 0.78, the fact that it's positive tells us that the slope is positive. And then it's not that close to 1, tells us that we have a bunch of these points up here that aren't very close, and then even some of these guys down here that aren't very close. So instead of creating this equation on our own and just hoping that it's right, we know for a fact that this is as close of an equation as we can get. So when we go back to our notes here, my line of best fit is y equals, we need a pen, y equals, what was it, um, 0.23x plus 8.08, .08, so we'll say 8.1. Now this models the data. It goes up by about 0.23 every time and it started around 8.1, which if you look here, it's close. So now the whole point of this is to kind of do what we did yesterday and use this line of best fit. So here's a different thing. This table shows the points received by the top 10 paintball teams in a tournament. We need to use this data and figure out how many points the 20th ranked team received. So what we're going to do is we're going to type this data in. Let's get a new one. Remember we're going to go up to add item and we're going to add a table of data. And this time it's ranks, so we're going to start with 1, and we have 2, and then this kind of populates it, and we're going to go up to 10. And then our y value is the score, so this team scored 100, and then 89, and then 96, 99, 97, 98, 78, 70, 64, and finally 80. So let's make sure we can see these dots. And now if you look, they're nowhere near where we're looking because these numbers are big. And if we just zoom out, we don't really get a good view of these points. So up here in the uh, little wrench area, we can change the graphs. Now, we don't really need things much bigger on the x-axis. So let's change that to like negative 5 to maybe 15. And you see how that spreads our data out so we can see it a little better? Now that we have our data, we can kind of see that there's a negative correlation there. So our r value should be negative. And we're going to add an expression. So remember, we want to take the y and the x from the table. So that's why we need y1 squiggle mx1 plus b. And then it gives us a nice graph that goes through it. If you notice, our r value is negative, which is what we thought it was going to be. And it, it's actually a little further away from negative 1 than the last one, but if you look at the data, that makes sense. you got a bunch of data points up here that are above it, and a bunch of data points down here that are below it. But this right here is what we're going to use to make our equation. So our equation for this one is going to have a slope of about negative 3.3 and a y-intercept of about 105. So if we go back to our notes, we can create an equation. Need a pen again. Y equals negative 3.3x plus 105.3. So then when this says how many points did the 20th ranked team receive, all we're going to do is plug in 20 for x and see what we get out. 
So we have negative 3.3 times 20 plus 105.3. And we can plug this in our calculator. So we have 3.3 times 20. And then we're going to add that to 105.3. And it says that it's about 39.3 points. And since we can't have 0.3 of a point, we'll say that the 20th ranked team earned about 39 points. So there's nothing really new here today besides using the Desmos program to do the work that we did yesterday for us. So you got two to try on your own. Um, if you need to, go back and rewatch the steps on how to type this into Desmos because on a test or a quiz you will get to use this computer program so make sure you know how to use it. Make sure you write down any questions you have and we can go over them in class. Enjoy your night!